Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the recap with Apostle Desmond Dobbins. And I am Rashida Hay. We want to thank you so much for joining us on today. We are truly excited about what is about to go down. Listen, you all, I'm kind of a little surprised. I'm over here kind of nervous too at the same time, but I'm excited. It's just really excitement because we are here together once again. It's been a long, long time, you all, since we have done a pop-up or just come together um, like we used to do in the beginning when it first started as the day of the daughter when the lord gave apostle desmond the vision the um what this ministry was supposed to look like so we're excited about collabing today with um with apostle on today so hello everybody welcome 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 apostle we are so glad to have you here on today Thank you so much for uh, just collabing together. <laughs> it's yes. been a long time, so I'm over here giddy. <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Amen. And uh, just so glad that you decided to bring this together. I want to greet everyone on Facebook, everyone on Zoom. Amen. I'm excited to see what God's going to bring out of us on today. Amen. Amen. I want to greet everyone on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, I'm missing my cues. <laughs> we want to greet everyone on Blog Talk Radio uh, this afternoon, Speaking Live Wednesdays with me, Apostle Desmond Davis, the deliverance technician. Uh, wherever we are alive, we want to greet you, my beautiful spiritual daughter, uh, the Honorable Prophetess Rashida Hag with uh, the Day of the Daughters. Amen. And all that she's doing, amen. She decided to bring us together for collaboration. Uh, glory to God. So we just want to greet everyone that is there with us. Uh, we just want to greet you. There's Crystal Young, who always puts up our videos to remind us that we know each other. Amen. <laughs> so we give God praise uh, for everyone that is here. Amen. I'll put it back in your hands, prophetess. God bless. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle. Everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, just take a few moments, uh, if you don't mind, to go ahead and share this out. We would like for everyone to come on in. Let's just have a good time as we recap, as we review. Um, and I, um, I'm definitely going to go over the definition because I like to look up words. You all, some of you know, I love looking up words. I love to learn. Listen. <laughs> And I had looked a recap. So as I'm getting that together, I just want to thank you all so much for just being with us. Thank you for supporting Apostle Desmond throughout the year here of 2021. Thank you for supporting the Day of the Daughters throughout the year. Thank you to those that are just coming in, getting to know each ministry. She is the deliverance technician. Listen, we're going to tell more and more about what is going on in the different ministries and uh, what all Apostle is doing, what all the Day of the Daughters is doing. And even for those of you that are new and this is your first time hearing about each ministry, we're going to give you a little origination about the ministries as well. So, um, um, even with the day of the daughter, because like it's the day of the daughters now, but when it first started, it was the day of the daughters. And so we're just going to give a little bit about that, how it all came about. And even with how we used to do pop-ups, we used to uh, do lives on Friday, Fridays. Let me make sure I got my days right. Or then we will come together. We would get with the ladies uh, when we were in person. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. So Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Apostle, um, if you don't mind uh, letting the people know even about the radio um, or however, wherever you would like to start, that will be great. Yes. Uh, right now, we are live on the air at Desmond Dobbins Radio, uh, the radio station where we have different segments. And like right now, generally on Wednesdays at noon, we are live on the air with Speaking Live Wednesdays with me. Apostle Desmond Dobbins, the deliverance technician. Uh, we are airing our, our morning prayer, but there's right ministries, the church that I have. We do a morning prayer live sometime and we do a live Bible studies there. We do live Sunday morning service there. I have a lady who is just beginning to lease time for me. I don't know the name of her show yet, but we're working out all of the um, 
uh, necessities for that. Also, I have an apostle who's going to come in. She's going to begin to have time for me as well. So I'm just honored that the people want to come to Desmond Dobbins uh, Radio uh, dot com and begin to air out whatever they need to air out there. They could get their own line and do it, but the Lord is sending them to come to my radio station and do it there. It's the beginning of something great. Um, actually, what's going to be coming up next year is Lamont Dobbins, my son and I, my grandson. We're going to be doing some family segments. Amen. Also, we're going to invite uh, the Grinston family to come in and do some family segments uh, because we want to reach family. And the thing that we need to understand is that it is a process. It, it just doesn't happen overnight. Amen. And so uh, just going to be honest with you guys. We're going to keep it real. My son says the N word is going to come out of him. I'm just going to tell you, you got to know him like Rashida knows him. But the goal is that we can gain others to come to Christ. He knows him. Uh, he loves him. And so whatever we got to do to get people to come to the Lord, we're going to do that. Um, and so uh, that's one one of the many things that is coming up uh, in 2022 uh, that the Lord gave me. And I started in 21. I hope that was the question. But I want to know if you would share some about some of those uh, what what difference do you see that has happened with uh, Day of the Daughter? I know in the beginning, the Lord told me Day of the Daughter. Um, then he told me to give it to you and you multiplied it to Day of the Daughters, which that just shows our year difference in our ages uh, because I, I was using it as plural, but you brought it to plural, which is, is perfectly fine. I, I, I'm enjoying it. But I wanted to see uh, how is it that you bring, uh, I, it's a two-part question, it is. I know you're like, don't give me a tr trick question. I'm not doing that. Uh, because I'm very proud of you as my daughter. Um, and just to see what you've done with it, it's, it's just so amazing. So I, I see that you bring a lot of women there monthly and you don't forget your sisters. Um, and you you brought a lot of women each month. You bring different women. Each week you bring different women. And so how do you choose the women? Could you share some of that? Like, how did you elevate it? And then how did you go? It's a two-part question. How did you elevate it? And then what gave you the, the idea to bring different women in and celebrate them? Well, amen. Uh, I'm going to try to answer this as best as I can. So with that, the process, as I like to use the word, the process or the journey um, of it is um, I definitely, it was, uh, I did not want to do it. Let's just, can, I, can we be, uh, Ma, come on, you know, you like to be honest. <laughs> because I know, listen, this is to encourage us because I know someone is out there and they are, they may be going through the same thing where they know that God has told them or given them a vision or given them a dream and he has told them to do something, but they don't want to quite do it. Okay, listen, it's okay. It's okay. But it's okay when to feel that way. But then the okay is the being obedient to go ahead and doing it. So I want to um, let you know that it's okay because of whether you may be afraid. Like I was afraid. I didn't want to do lives. I didn't want to get in front of the camera. I don't even want to speak half of the time. But hey, listen, the push is there and it's real. And so we have to do it. <laughs> So listen, so with the process is God said he had been showing me things for years. And how many of you know that God, he'll give you things, he'll show you things and you write it down in your, whether it's your tablet, you put it in your device, you'll put it on the shelf. But so when my apostle, I call, you'll hear me say my lot, I'm speaking of Apostle Dobbins. She, when she said, hey, this is what the Lord is saying. This is what and he told me to give it to you. I just said, okay, because I knew without a shadow of doubt yeah even though i didn't want to do it but i knew that i was supposed to do it ma listen so i, I went ahead and i had to and i took it before the lord and and this is i want to this is the very key thing everything and even as i'm even learning this the more everything must be birthed in prayer Yes. If you want it to be, as we call, successful, if you want the foundation to be sure, if you want it to be sustained, everything should be, let me say it like that, birth in prayer. So it had to be birth in prayer. So what did that mean for me? I had to get on my face. I had to get in my secret place and ask God, what is your vision concerning this ministry, concerning this baby that has been given unto me? Listen. 
listen, that I have to store it, okay? Because it doesn't belong to me. It's God's, but I am the store. He allowed me to store it, okay? So with that being said, I had to go to God in prayer. So the daughter spotlight, what she's talking about, the monthly, that's daughter spotlight, where we spotlight a woman of influence every month. And what does that look like? We put it out there, and this is in speaking to one of my uh, mentors, uh, Dr. Kishma. You know, we like to put plugs in over here. We like to give honor and credit where it is due. So I was speaking to her one day, and then so she asked me about the vision. And as I began to tell her the vision that God was giving me concerning the day of the daughters, um, I just began to tell her those things. And I said, this is what I heard in prayer to honor. And she said, that's good. And so we began to talk about it, the thing began begin to unfold. And so what I did was I put it out there. And so I said, hey, if you would like to be spotlighted, email us. And so I gave them the email address, the day of the daughter's email address. And I only reach out to those that I believe the spirit of the Lord is leading me to reach out. So that's what that looks like. So I reach out to those. It's been just a few, a hand few that I feel that the Lord is saying, hey, you know, come on, bring them on in, see if they would like to be a part of this. And we do that. But most of the time it's people contacting us saying, hey, I would like to be spotlighted. I want to share what it is that I'm doing. And we want to honor them by uh, gracing, having them to grace our page, the day of the daughter's page. So that's what the daughter spotlight looks like. And that's the monthly um, uh, spotlighting that Ma was uh, talking about, that Apostle was speaking of. And we do Daughters Talk, which is a weekly broadcast. And that came out of prayer. That was birthed out of prayer as well, because it was not birthed from me. Listen, especially the time we come on. I said, Jesus, 10 o'clock, really? <laughs> But how many of you know that everything he does has purpose and um, it's just been a blessing and the people that is reaching even for the times that we're in. And so I'm beginning to even see now you may not understand it or not know what God is doing in the beginning, but I'm beginning to see now why he said the time that he said, why he said the day that he said, because he already knew what was ahead. Oh, come on, somebody. He already knew the people that he wanted to reach. Come on, now. Listen, and so that's why we must submit and we must obey and just trust him in that. We don't have to know all the answers because I'm that type of person. I, I, you know, I do. I like to know, you know, what's going on. But he's said, no, just trust me, Rashida. Just trust me. I'm God. And so we do that weekly uh, broadcast. And, um, and that is the same process with that. People, they just contact us, say, hey, I would like to be a guest. Or I reach out to those that I feel the Lord is leading to have come on. So that is the same process. Did I answer those questions? Yes. Uh, thank you so much for that. Because I, I was wondering how it is that you came about doing that. Um, and I, I wanted to get clarity on that. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, the other thing is you have a few books that you have co-labored with, co-written. Can you share on some of those? Yes, absolutely. So uh, the books, <laughs> the books, uh, the first book that um, I was co-authoring in is called the Bir uh, Dream Birthing the Dreamer in You. Um, here and that collaboration with was with uh, one of my mentors, Dr. Kishma George, and some uh, other co-authors, and um, that's just really about what I'm speaking to now. Is God has given us dreams, God has given us you know visions, ideals, witty inventions. I hear for someone even now, He's given us witty inventions, and He's saying now is the time. God is coming for those things. He says now is the time for you to birth. Now is the time. This is the season for those things to come into fruition to come to pass. And so that's what this book is about, is about birthing out those things that God has placed in us. How do they get a copy of your book? Yes, and I can put um, our website information up and it's uh, www.nrggenterprise.com and they will get an autographed copy from us um, just by going onto our website and all of our books and um, materials are on our website. Awesome. That's wonderful. Amen. Uh, I wanted to ask you about something else. How do you feel? Uh, so another one of your accomplishments you had, because I know you, is you you were ordained this year. Uh, but I know because we had the conversation that 
uh, you were suggested to uh, to refresh in the in the school. Not that you weren't a prophet already, because you know I'm your spiritual mom, so you know I I know what I said. I said Rashida, I'm going to ordain you, but I really recommend that you go and take a refresher in the prophetic classes. Not that you you are not, but I think it would help you for where you're going. And to me, you said, okay, but I don't know how you felt inside of you. But when you completed that, you were ordained. And so could you share something on, on how you, you feel about the ordination, how your life changed uh, versus being called prophet to being ordained prophet? Uh, can you share some of that? Absolutely. And if I could share it honestly, yeah. <laughs> Yes. So with that process, I was like, are you serious? I got to go back and do this again. <laughs> I know y'all pray for me. Listen, <laughs> but I was just like, OK, but I trusted um, God, the spirit of God in my apostle. And I just said, OK, and I just told myself, get yourself together and go, let's go ahead and get it done. <laughs> because I was already in school and so I was just getting in school and so I had not been to school in years so it was just like this was really a stretching season for me and so it was just like oh god but um so that whole process it was really good because it helped me to go back in in reading the materials and studying out it it helped me to learn a lot of things and refresh a lot of things um, that, you know, over time, you just, if you're not using it, sometimes you just, <laughs> but um, so with that, and it, it, to be honest, it ignited, I don't know how to explain this, but it, it ignited something within me. And so, and I would say that prophetic, uh, because, and I, I'm going to watch what I say, because where I was, I wasn't being utilized. My gift was not being utilized, if that's the right way to say that. I'm trying to watch my words. Right. So um, I was not operating uh, in the prophetic where I was. It's, um, I was doing it like outside of like the ministry I was in, but like in the ministry that I was in, I was not operating. Uh, my, you know, my gift wasn't being used prophetically. So, Amen. Um, I, I just wanted to share that. Uh, the reason why I did that, because when I when I prayed to the Lord about you, he gave me Apostle Paul with Timothy and how he said to him that he was his son, but that he charged him to stir up the gift that was within him as he laid hands on him. And I was like, Lord, she's already been called a prophet. She's already being released. And then he said, this is the call that you're going to do upon her life. So I had to obey the Lord concerning you. And in my heart, you, you know, I just want to be free with you, you know, as we always do. The enemy tried to make it feel like a risk of, of losing you for something that you've already did. But when you came through the classes, we were in Indianapolis on the, I think, east side of town. So it was like years, years, years ago. And we had since added new classes. And those were the ones that needed to be refreshed in you. Only reason why I, I wanted to share that with you is because a lot of people have approached me to ordain them. And they give me the hoopla and all of that. Then when the instructions are given after I go to prayer, they don't submit to the instructions because it's beneath them. But the thing about being elevated is we have to go low. Now, I see this expansion. to me. You know, concerning you, it's like an explosion has happened in your life. And I don't know if it would have happened if you would not have submitted. You you could have said many things to me. Uh, possible, I already done that. Possible, I'm in school already. Uh, possible, I got 20 mentors. I'm doing this, 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 and this. I, You know, so many different things you could have said to me. And not that you didn't feel it, but you submitted and you did well through it. And now here we are. Look at all these massive platforms you're going on you know all the travels you're doing you've written two books i know you got other books that are coming out uh, that the lord has revealed to me so many things that you're doing because you submitted and it's just not a thing that we should just go and ordain people that we do not know who are not true sons or daughters because then we're going to pay for that because you don't really know you can't ordain people that you don't know um, and there's going to be a new change coming in this season 
where leaders are really going to pour into those that they ordain because we have to be accountable for those uh, that we put our hands on. No one can come and tell me anything about you that I don't know. Amen. And so I wanted to commend you in that. I also have to commend Naaman. I know he's not here. Naaman Haig, Prophet Naaman Haig is her husband. He's done the same thing. And he's been prophesying for years. Amen. And so it's something that you can come and submit. Um, and then the Lord elevate you because of your, your humble submission. And so I just wanted to, to open that door. So has your life changed since ordination, Prophet Rashida? Yes, yes, it has. And um, just hearing everything that you said, Apostle, is that that is accountability, submission, accountability. I know everybody views those things differently, but that is, like you said, key. It is so in important. It is so important. Um, I am submitted to leadership. Um, I am accountable um, to leadership. And that has, in hear, hear me what I say, that has been one of the very um, key things that has this elevation or this uh, is what people see that because I'm submitted. And a lot of times we want to make sure that we don't get, start thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to. And it's very humbling and it keeps me humble in that submission, in that accountability, because they are my safe place. They are my wise counsel. And sometimes when we don't want to be accountable, then the wise counsel is not there to keep us us safe. So if I can encourage us to make sure you are accountable, make sure you are submitted to leadership. Um, don't look at submission as a negative thing or a negative word. Listen, I'm talking about submission concerning the word of God. Be submitted to leadership because that is your safe place. That is, like you say, the Bible says in a multitude of counsel, there is safety. So that has been my safety. So when I, they're like, hey, Rashida, hey. And so um, with that, it has helped me to grow. It has helped me to learn a lot of things. Um, it even things that God shows me, even has helped me to know when the time he is that maybe this is not the time, you know, so it has kept me safe in a very safe place. Um, also, um, with that, I might have to add, go back and re-ask you that, is that um, with the ordination, like you were talking about the stirring, the stirring, uh, a lot of things, uh, and I would just want to speak of the laying on of hand service, if I can. I just want to speak yes. about that service. There is so much to talk about with that <laughs> service, just everything uh, before it, around it, during it. But I want to speak of when I was just looking at all of the evangelists, ministers, prophets, everyone, apostle that was there being, uh, the oil was being poured. And my God, Jesus keep myself together here. I just feel God. Just, I just was seeing the hand of God and just the move of God, the timing of God. And it almost reminds me of even Esther, where it talks about for such a time as this. And that's all I kept seeing God was saying. So somebody, I want to encourage you, don't get anxious. Don't be anxious for anything. Wait on God. God's timing is perfect. It's everything. His timing, he knows what he's doing. So even as I was looking at everyone, we were all in a row sitting down. And um, as we were there, just um, allowing God to do what he was wanting to do through the apostles that were pouring the oil on us. When they began to pour the oil, they were speaking and praying over us. My God, I felt fire. Listen, you all, I know that the other ones can attest to this, but I felt fire and it was just like the oil. It was like they were done pouring, but it was just like, I felt like they were still there pouring. I just kept feeling the oil. It was like never ending. And it just kept pouring and pouring and pouring. And I'm just like, oh my God. And then even in that moment, I began to have a vision. And what I was seeing, what God was showing me, he was saying, Rashida, everything that I've shown you was for such a time as this. You have to know and you must understand that I've called you as an end time prophet. I have called you in the marketplace. I have called you to speak what I have commanded you to say, what thus says the Lord. So why was it so important that I could not be 
be seen back then because God had to take me through the process. God had to prove me. God, and that doesn't mean it's ending. He continues to prove me. He continues to refine me. He continues to process me. Why? Because can I be honest with you all? As mom likes to tell others, uh, I was a cusser. Listen, my <laughs> mouth was very, very bad. Listen, and even at times, I had to continue to maintain my deliverance. Uh, did she just say that? Yes, I did. Because, listen, I'm telling you, when God's hand, when the call of God is on your life, when you know, especially as a prophet, that you are called into the office of a prophet, you cannot say what you want to say. You cannot do what you want to do. You have to be that voice of the Lord. And listen, we have to be very careful of what we say because God told me, now I can trust you with my people. I know that you will not take my people. So had he given me what the, the, let's just talk about the ministry, the day of the daughters and all the things that he's doing through my husband and I back then, I would have messed it up. Why? Because I was not ready. Listen, that's why the timing of God is perfect. That's why when we say God is a good God, he's the shepherd. Yes, do you really mean that? Or are you just clichéingly saying that? Listen, come on, we have to really get the revelation of what we're saying, of what God, who God is and what he says. Because when we have the revelation of who he is and what he says, then we will understand that God's timing is perfect and that everything that he does has purpose. And so whatever he has spoken over our lives, it shall come to pass. Mm. Uh, I pray that I answered whatever you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you did. And it was so, so blessed. So we have, you, you know, you have ministries where it seems like they're never going to ordain you. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in just being called prophet and there is never a plan put in place to ordain you prophet, apostle, whomever God has called you to be. I don't believe in ordaining you and putting a monthly price on your ordination. I'm just sharing my beliefs by what the word of God says. But I don't I don't believe in you just being ordained and just being funky with whatever you, you have get, been given or I mean, you just cut out and you just do whatever you want to do. I don't agree with that. I agree with the word of God that you should follow the process. Be a true son, be a true daughter. And be a true father that anoints or the mother who anoints. Amen. All these things need to be up front in the forefront. That way the Lord will get the glory out of all of it. And I just want to tell you that I'm very proud of you. I know name is not on here. I'm very proud of him and the others that came through that time of ordination, which was something for us. And how you all were so patient to wait uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, but I just have to thank Apostle Brass for coming, Apostle Bowler, and the other leaders that came and met us there, and that the glory of the Lord met us in that place. It was just so, so, so uh, holy. It was a holy place. It was a holy time that glorified the Lord, um, and it was because of your guys' humble submission. You as my daughter, my very first daughter, uh, you know, um, your patience and the pruning process takes time, but God knows and that you trust to know that God speaks. This is not an easy place to be. That for one, you know, you're my daughter. You see, the Lord is using me to bless others. And then when I was riding down the street, the Lord said, you're going to start the day of the daughter ministry. I said, okay, I'll start the day of the daughter ministry. And then later he says, you're going to have Rashida help you with it. I said, okay. He said, you're going to give it to her. I said, hey, no problem. You know, I, I'm excited to do it. You know, Rashida, it's time because you you were like the diamond that was just hidden away, tucked away somewhere. We just keep her over here. You know, she says she this and that, but we're just going to keep up. No, it's time out for that. And in 2022, there's going to be a lot of movement in the kingdom. Amen. I don't want to do uh, the word of the Lord service right now, but you all are going to see it's going to be so much movement in the kingdom. It's going to be amazing. You're going to be like, nobody but God did this. It's going to be a lot of movement, a lot of movement in the kingdom, a lot of rising uh, coming in the kingdom uh, to those that have been submitted. And like David was tending to his father's sheep, and I, I'm, we're going to get back to this. Amen. David was tending to his father's sheep, 
and they were looking for him to anoint him king. And they put all the ones who presumed that they presumed that was going to be king, but it wasn't them. It's not the stout ones. It's not those that, that have the look. It's the ones that the Lord has chosen already that's been having their heads in the books. They've been being submissive and doing everything they've been told to do. It's not the ones that have been trying to pave their own way. It's the ones that the Lord has their hands on, his hands on those that have been submitted. And so we're going to see a lot of movement coming in this 2022 and a lot of those who are gifted in the area of a pro uh, prophetic and healing and deliverance, the Lord is going to push them to the forefront. It's like they're not going to be able to hide anywhere. Amen. I love how you're just decorating all of this. And this it's just showing in front of me. I'm just, I, I love it. It's so great. I was trying to think what else I could ask you. Um, I don't know. Do you have any questions? Yeah, so if you could please just let the people, thank you so much for that, Apostle, but just let the people know about you and the ministry, The I know you let them know earlier, but just how did some things originate? How did some things start for you? Uh, there's where our ministry started with my own deliverance, being delivered from uh, lesbianism. Um, the Lord gave me this book. I was over, uh, the Lord had already given me the words, there's where our ministries that I was over one of my friend's house in this book. I uh, was on a, a shelf with all these other books and I don't see it in front of me to even call the name of it. But this one particular book was highlighted. So when I asked my friend, can I pick up this book? Can I look at this book? And she said, yes. And when I opened it, it, it went to a, a place that said, there is a way out. There is a way out. So it was like the Lord was giving me the confirmation that this is definitely the name of your ministry. And it was, um, uh, talking about uh, being delivered, Romans 7, 25. And it was talking about being accepted in the beloved, being true sons, true daughters. And so the Lord was beginning to set everything in place at that time. And, and I don't know if you remember, you all were coming to my house, being taught at my house. Then we ventured out to the church. And so the school wasn't originally called, uh, there's where our ministries training center. And then the Lord told me to name it Kingdom Principles Learning Center, but keep there as a way out as the church. So I did that uh, for some seasons. Um, the Lord has called me to the fivefold. The fivefold is called to me as their apostle, uh, as far as equipping and training um, and things like that. And, and the, the one thing that I love about it is the Lord has just gifted me to be one who pushes other, who, who pulls their gifts out of them uh, to help them to be able to shine. It's not about my name. I don't have a problem that it's not about my name. I'm not envious. I just want to love them and, and push them. Um, and, and the funny thing about that is people come, they're shy, they're timid, or they've been bruised and broken and they don't know how to move forward. But the Lord seems to give me the pieces to show them how to put it back together and just, you know, exhort them and, and push them forward. Amen. Um, that is good. It is own sense. And it can be uh, something else uh, too, because uh, you, you kind of set the tone that if you if you if you trust a spiritual mom or a spiritual father to rear you and the Lord says that that's who they are, you got to trust them even when it doesn't feel good that they have your best interest at heart. Everything is not just about them, but when you you know, last year taught me a lot of things that everyone that that comes to say that you're their spiritual mom, they're not your your son or they're not your daughter. And so we really, really have to hear God in that retrospect. Also, the Lord has given me Emerging in Christ International, where we cover other ministries. Um, I have a lot of positive things with that. I don't know how many churches that I cover. Um, it, it's a positive, and there are some, some challenges there because you have those that, that are already set in place, which is a plus, and sometimes it can pull you. I don't run anyone's church. If they come to me with questions, I help them the best as I, I can. But I'm kingdom. I'm not Baptist. I'm not traditionally sound. I'm kingdom. So my answer is probably going to be a different answer. And it's up to them to uh, to take it or leave it or with whatever they decide to do with that. But they can't control me with how they were reared. Amen. Which all things are set up front. Um, how the system is set in place. And so I think for 2021, it taught me a lesson that a lot of people have their own expectations, their selfish motives. And if you don't adhere to what they want, then they'll try to destroy you. I, I think that really uh, taught me a lot 
um, as far as an apostle that covers other ministries, other individuals. Um, uh, just I hope I'm okay with that. Uh, just to learn from that, that even if the Lord tells you to keep the people close to you, then you have to know that he allowed it to happen for your next level, for your growth, and that you have to pass tests. I like to tell the leaders at Emerging in Christ, you know, international, you have to pass that test. You have to pass people tests, money tests, because some people try to buy you. They think they give you the biggest tithe, and because they give you the biggest tithe, they think that they own you, and you got to do what they say. If not, they'll take the, they'll stop giving the tithe, and it's just, I'm not geared, I'm not here for the money. I've been doing this. I've been leading people and I didn't have a dime. You know, I was living by faith, still living by faith. It's just not about that. You just don't, you don't go and control your leader. And I don't know where the scripture that you control your leader or your father, or your mother. I don't know where that is. And so those things I had to deal with uh, last year, I had to get through that and still have my heart and still have my give and still have my love and still be willing to take on, you know, sons and daughters because the enemy was coming after that. Um, the Lord will give you those who will hold your arms up for real this time. You know, you get to the point to where you need that, and then he will send that. So I give God praise for Emerging in Christ International. Uh, it's been a challenge to bring other churches, other ministries together, uh, but we love one another. We're not envious of one another. We're a giving ministry. We're a loving ministry. Amen. And they can receive correction. Uh, they give correction. Amen. And we're learning to travel together as teams. Uh, what I really love is that they all flow in deliverance in their own way, that miracles do flow out. Uh, that is a wonderful blessing. You know, we come together on every month. I hope I'm okay. I don't, I don't know what else I, I needed to talk about. Uh, we did Time to Represent the Kingdom this year, which uh, the glory of the Lord came in on Friday night. Uh, the honorable thing about that was a lot of people were having dreams and visions about the glory coming in. And uh, I was up on Friday night, which we didn't know which, which day or which speaker of the glory was going to come in. Just so long as he came to see us. Uh, we had Pastor Yolanda fly in from Texas. We, we had an awesome time. And um, just that the glory came in, blessed us on Friday night. And it blessed those who had prophesied. It blessed those who dreamed it. Blessed those who had the experience before the experience manifested. Uh, it was amazing to see the glory come in and to just barely be able to stand in the glory and, and everyone's testimonies on that was so different, but that it did happen. There's a lot of people having church, but the glory doesn't come and meet them at all. Amen. And so the many testimonies of healing and deliverance that took place, uh, that was a blessing, which we do that um, every year, time to represent the kingdom. Um, the school, Kingdom Principles Learning Center, uh, where a lot of times we've had to give away uh, a lot of the class time we would just bless people to come to the class. This year, we have a lot of students that are paying their fees uh, so we don't have to write it off. And they're learning and they're they're coming into the class. And we have pre-recorded classes, which gives me more time for things that I have to do next year. Um, and I do have a book, Experiences with Demons. Amen. Um, this is my book right now. I'm working on some other things. The one thing I can share that uh, definitely is going to come in 2022 with all the movement is um, some segments where you will be able to register for, and, and they won't be free. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. They're not going to be free because most of the things that I do are free. They are, most of the teachings that I do are free, that are, are deep, um, but you're going to see coming around some segments of uh, titles you never heard before. It may be $15, $20, $25 to register, but we're going to be the only ones in the Zoom or StreamYard, wherever we're going to be. And so it's going to be an honor to be able to come in and glean. And so I'm listening to the Lord on those topics, uh, prayerfully, quarterly, or monthly, that I'm going to do that. I'm still trying to finalize all of that to get the dates down. You'll be able to come in, spend time with me, um, if you have any questions, we're going to open up for questions before we um, end out those sessions. Um, and that's going to be for a donation uh, of a certain amount, which that's going to be there. Amen. And I was trying to think of something else here. I don't know if you have any questions. Um... Yes. Can you let them know where they can get your book? 
we have it going on across the screen, but can you let them know how they can purchase your book? Yes, my book is available at desmondobbins.com. You can go to my website. <laughs> it is there. It is. You go there, you look around, and you will see it. it's on the first page. And you just hit it, and it'll take you to Amazon, and you can just purchase it. And I want to thank you all for your support. Amen. Desmondobbins.com is my website. Uh, that was one of the accomplishments that I had to do that the Lord gave me. One of the mandates uh, was Desmond Dobbins Radio. Uh, that is up and running. Desmondobbins.com, which meant the Lord wanted me to do the website. That's up and running. Uh, so basically everything the Lord basically told me to do, I've done outside of a few things, which I'm planning to do them within the first quarter of 2021. They're going to come in uh, to play glory to God. And so I'm just excited about the new year. There's going to be a lot of movement. You all, you're going to watch and see, you're going to see this. You're going to think that apostle said it again. There's a lot of movement going on. It's going to be so much movement going on. It's going to, you, you're going to think she said this and movement means like a lame person who cannot get up and move is going to get up and move. Mm, you guys got to get this. Amen. You've been living in one city for forever. You're going to get up and move to another city, another state, probably another region, and probably another country. If you're willing to submit to what the Lord is calling you to do, it's going to be a lot of movement. You've been stagnated in one location. He's going to move you to another one. If you're willing to move, if you're willing going to be a lot of movement in 2022 amen it's going to be good it's going to be great for us and then you're going to see soon as you land in that place soon as you get to that borough soon as you get to that stoop or that rooftop or where the lord is sending you to your life is going to begin to flourish and bloom as never before it's going to be amazing amen anything else <laughs> Amen. That is amazing. Thank you, Lord. Listen, you all, it, this, the information is on. If you want to join Apostle on the radio show, the call it information is up there. Her uh, website information for her book and anything that she's doing, we posted her website information that is going across the screen as well. So please join her, connect with her. Uh, we put up all the ministries um, that she has that is going as well. Listen, you all, this has been truly amazing we want to we want to take a break real quick and we want to do a giveaway yay how many y'all like we like giveaways over here <laughs> well we have some instructions so apostle apostle is also going to be a blessing and she wants to give away uh one of her books and so um apostle would you like to do the first giveaway or would you like for us to do the first giveaway you, you can i think everyone here has my book but if there's someone here who doesn't have my book you can let me know and I would love to give it to uh, Christina Davis. Oh, I see Christina Davis. I'll bless her with one of my books. If you would inbox me your, your mailing information, uh, this is Experiences with Demons. It is a deliverance uh, book. Amen. If, if you don't mind, I would love to bless you with this and I'll, I'll even sign it. You can inbox me here or if you're Rashida's friend, we, we need your information and I will give it to you. And I don't know who else is saying they don't have it. Who was that? Because it's, it's really slow on minds over here. No, uh, they're probably in the group. So um, can you put your name in the comments so we can see your name? The one who's uh, the person who said, I don't anytime, like if they didn't give uh, the stream your permission to see their photo or name, then it won't show them. But the um, person who said, I don't, if you can put your name, um, we would greatly appreciate that. Cause Apostle wants to bless you. Yes, I blessed him with one of the books and I will sign it. It's Tedra. <laughs> okay, I'll give it to Tedra, Prophetess Tedra. I'll give that to her. And then I have one more available uh, for someone who doesn't have it. I'm not seeing a lot of visitors here that uh, have not. There's a uh, Richard uh, Crittenden. Oh. <laughs> I'll bless them. That's that's three. Oh, hey, that DJ. Okay? <laughs> that's DJ. All right now, DJ. <laughs> Would that be okay, uh, Prophetess? If you fell into, yes. Yeah, those are my three gifts. Okay, who says they do have it? Uh, put your name, whoever says you do have it, because we want to make sure it goes to, she says she wants to make sure it goes to someone who does not have it. I don't know if that was Tedra or not. So we're gonna put the winners up and she wants you to inbox her. Yes. Okay, so 
I, okay, I did have it. Who's I did have it? You have to put your name. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you, Yannette. She said, Yannette says she, she has it. it. Okay. Oh, Rosetta. Blessings, Rosetta. Rosetta says she don't have it. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll give one to her. Okay. Oh, and Sheila. Hey, blessings, Sheila. Okay, somebody said, I don't have, but I'm dry. <laughs> They're dry. <laughs> Okay, so which ones, Ma? We have Rosetta. We had, uh, I believe, Tedra said something. I believe. Uh, you Is said that Christine. five? I can, I can do five books. You, okay. So, so far, we have Christina Davis. We have Tedra. We have uh, Rosetta. Uh, Sheila Beasley. Try that. And I think that's four. And uh, yeah, help me count, Lord. I don't want to, I'm trying to type in. <laughs> Trying to put their names up. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four. So who was five? Okay, okay. I don't have. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the group and see who this is. They're saying they don't have it, but they're driving, so they can't put their name. I guess. So let me see. So while we're doing that, while we're trying to see who, well, I'm trying to see who it is. Oh, glory to God. Let me see who is it. And blesses everyone. Thank y'all for joining. Okay, Sheila, we have you. We have Rosetta. Thank you, Tedra. We have Tedra. Okay, uh, so that's four. Amen. So anybody else? Oh, Rosetta said thank you, Apostle. <laughs> Christina. We have. Um, yeah, we have Christina Davis. Okay. We have Tedra. We have Rosetta. And we have Sheila. Mama just gave them all out at one time. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so we, um, it, let's say, I don't know if you want to wait to give the other one or not, or if you want to, if someone else is the young saying, man, you called the young oh, man. Oh, DJ. Yeah. Okay. That's the five right there. All right. DJ. Okay. I'm gonna, so I'm going to put your name up. So, yeah, thank you, Crystal. You're welcome. We got DJ Crystal. Yeah, we got it. Okay, so here we go. All right, so these are the winners of Apostles Books. Yeah, let me know if I got that right. Christina Davis, Tedra Denise, Rosetta Priestley, Sheila Sheila Beasley, and DJ Crittenden. All right, got them? All right. Okay, so um, please inbox Apostle Desmond Dobbins. She is Desmond Dobbins. Uh, no, let, let me see. Wait a minute. Say your other name, Ma. Desmond <laughs> Refillway Dobbins. Yes. I will put it up there, darling. Thank you, because I don't want to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> so please inbox her so that you um, she can get your information and so she can um, sew into you the books into you and they will be a blessing. Amen. Here it is. So that's her. So inbox her on Facebook or send her a message through Messenger. <laughs> And so that you can get your books. Do not contact me. <laughs> You're going to be like, no, do not contact me for the books. <laughs> so for the books that Apostle gave, please contact her directly, please. Okay, y'all, because listen, <laughs> I got enough going on. <laughs> be like, I told Rashida, no, no. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Yolanda. She said a good book to read. She loves it. Amen. Yeah. They said, thank you, Ma. Thank you so much. Thank They're you. Excited. Thank you for having me. It's an honor <laughs> yeah. to have them out. Absolutely. All right. Well, all right. So before we do another giveaway. All right. So Apostle. Yes. Can you just give an encouraging word to the people? Whatever God is saying. Are you on me come back? <laughs> no. Um, I'm taking in what you're saying. It's not the season to convince others of who God has called you to be. This is the season to be who God has called you to be. Become that person. Become that person. Don't be distracted by the naysayers, but become that person literally and walk it out by faith. And the Lord God is going to exalt you in due season. Due season is not when you think it is, but it's when it's been designed by God. Don't allow the naysayers to take you out of the box, but allow it to catapult you to where you need to be. Amen. Allow it to catapult you to where you need to be. Glory to God. 
Amen. Amen. Yes. That's what the Lord was saying to me. Just be. <laughs> The Lord, the Lord has not forgotten about you. He's not slack concerning his, his promises towards us. And the thing about it is he's no respect to a person. What he'll do for one, he'll do for another. This is going to be the season. We hear people say all the time, God's about to blow your mind. God's about to do this. He is going to literally blow your mind. Some of you, he's already blown your mind. COVID already came. It didn't take you out. Amen. Um, so many things have happened and you're still living. Yes. You're still awake. You're still on the earth when the doctors gave up on you. Some of you have lost some of your loved ones and you're still here. Yes. Amen. Depression did not take you out. Whoosh. So you, you have to be encouraged in the Lord. Encourage ourselves in the Lord, in his word, and allow ourselves to be strengthened as we're, we're moving on. Because in all honesty, the Lord is using us to be a, an effective witness to those who are watching us. It matters what we're doing. It matters how we're living. You can lie about it all you want, but people on the inside know what we're really doing, how we're really living, what things are transpiring, honestly. That's how my son got saved because he said, I know nobody's coming in the back door or the front door. No male or female is coming to provide for you. God is providing. God is providing for me. So it caused my son to give his life to the Lord because of the change that he saw take place in me. People are watching our witness for real. This They're watching us. And then we wonder, why won't my son give his life to the Lord? Why won't my daughter give their life to the Lord? It's because of our lifestyle, what we're doing, how we're deciding to live in front of them. And so God is going to call us to the carpet, amen, on our life choices. Glory to God. And I pray that you come out of this victoriously. It's not, don't, don't think that God is not giving you the grace. I don't want to go over the time limit, but I keep hearing this because God is a God of grace and mercy and he loves us enough to give us grace and mercy. Amen. To give us the opportunity to get things right that are out of sorts. And so we have to get things right for his glory. Amen. We want to know why he's not using us in the miraculous, but what does our life say? What is our life saying? And why would he use us? You know, so Take the opportunity to get your life right before the Lord so that he can use you and that he will be glorified out of your processes. He was glorified out of Job's process where a lot of people would have, have ended their own lives because they lost their children. But a, a lot of us, like me, I'm steadfast because when I first gave my life to the Lord, I met Job, I met Joseph, I met Jesus and their dire straits. And so it's like the Lord was encouraging me from the get go. And then my son lost his leg. I had to minister in the process of my mother's death. You remember that? How we had to go and do ministry right when my mom died and, and, and the, the day of her funeral and all of that that night, how we were out and we had to go minister to 150 women and how God did all the miracles. All we had to do was show up, you know, and so God is coming to press us through, but we have to be willing to go through the press. That that is so good. And when you were just sharing that, I remember that, and I was, and I'm really grateful for that experience, um, if you will, because one of the things that it's just like just obey God. God already knew what was going to take place. God already knew, and even our obedience, like when God asks, when God tells us to do something, that's why it's so important. We just do it. He already knew. He already knows what's ahead. He already knows before we even know. So I take that as like, even when God, has, okay, he says to go do this or to be here at this place, this, he already knows what's going on. And so does that mean that I change? No, God, if he told you to do it, just do it because he already knows. And that's one thing I really appreciate. And it showed me a lot with that. You know, even in your time, you still obey God. And that, I mean, it spoke volumes to me. It, it really did. And it just made me look at God totally different. And I was just like, Wow. It, it says so much. It's not enough time to talk about all, but just in just seeing the many lives that were changed, that were transformed and just, just God was glorified. He was glorified. And even in the midst of 
um, what's the right way to say that, Apostle, of what we're going through for the lack of the right way. God, he's still there. He's right there with us. He's there with us. And we just that's where we just have to trust him and obey him to just do what he asks us to do because he's right there with us. And it makes me think about who was the prophet in the Bible where it, um, is it his, it was it his wife or so? It was just like, look, was it his wife? Who was it? They passed, but it was just like, you still have to do what God told you to do. Like, it was Ezekiel. Thank you. Ezekiel's I was like, wife. Yeah. That's, that's the scripture. And uh, let me say it one more time. If I can interject, and I'm gonna give it right back to you. No, that's no. the scripture because I was trying to get out of the assignment. I was trying to cancel some of the dates that were surrounded around my mother's death. And when the prophet told me, don't cancel none of my speaking engagements, I said, you tell God, I don't think it's fair. So when I woke up that morning, that's the scripture that I opened to. The Lord told Ezekiel, I'm going to take your wife. I don't want you to mourn or anything, but get back to work. And I was like, how is it that this is so humanly possible that you can think I can go and do this work at my mom's death, right at my mom's death. So at 11 at night, at 10 at night, when she to pick me up, we went there and I had to minister at 11, uh, from 11 at night to seven in the morning with no time limits. They gave me no time restraints. I'm like, who does that? So that meant that God was going to do whatever he needed to do with me. And the people was going to get healed, delivered. I mean, they couldn't even get close to us. They were just falling out. It, it just blew my mind. But all God needed was a yes before you go to Africa. Yes, before you get to these major platforms. A uh, yes in the small so that you can even think you want to find your way to the to the to the grand door. Amen. It's just God's ways are not our ways. It's not going to come the way that you think. It's always going to come a different type of a way through a different type of scenario. Job was giving back everything that he lost and more. Uh, Joseph was given more than what he lost. Then he was giving back what he lost. He was given prestige. Amen. You didn't look down on him after that. You bet not because it would have it cost your life. But we don't want to go through. We have to go through some things. And these, these mere sufferings are nothing compared to the glory that's about to be revealed. The Lord's glory is up on us. Amen. His glory is up on us. Amen. And then all while that was going on, Rashida was being changed. She was being changed from just being in the midst of us, from witnessing it, from standing right there with me. You know, and I was being changed. It's like you, you just could never be the same after that, seeing all those miracles. I mean, and just to be out somewhere in, in the hospital somewhere and people come up to you and say, you're that woman who the Lord used to heal us at the time of your mother's death. People don't understand why I'm so crazy. Now I don't come back from death. Forget about it. I'm telling everybody about Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's in your hands. Yes. And that is so good, Apostle. You were talking about that. Yes. And just when you were talking about that, yes, it just made me think like God, he is looking for our yes, our continual yes. And your yes may look different from somebody else's yes. Stop looking at everybody else. What is he asking of you? What is the Lord requiring of you? What is he, what is your yes look like? And just do that. And like you say, we, we talk about the scripture, you know, where God, he wants us to be faithful of the few, you know, to, so he can give us much more. But can he even trust you? Are you going to even give him your yes with what he's asking you to do? You're saying, you know, he's calling you to the nations and all these different things. But yet you won't even tell him yes or give him your yes or, or obey him just when he asks you to go and enroll into school. Or he asks you to go to and read this book. Or he asks you, come on, we're going to put it on every level. When he go and ask you to um so he may ask you to go and serve look apostle or he may ask you to call somebody and check on them and you won't even do that so listen listen we're going to encourage you on today what is god asking you what is your yes look like and just do it just be obedient to say yes it's a continuous i have to say yes every day every day every second Every minute. That's what my yes looks like. Yes, God. My yes looks like, okay, I choose your will over my will. That's what my yes looks like. I say yes to you, God. Not my will, but your will be done. God, I really don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. What did Jesus say? Nevertheless, I was talking about this last night. <laughs> nevertheless, I don't want to, but nevertheless, come on. Get your nevertheless on. <laughs> Listen, come on. We all have those moments. 
even Jesus, he is our example. He is our great example. That's why he understands. He feels what we feel. He's already experienced all of the things that we are going through. Listen, it was done on the cross. <laughs> If anybody understands, he understands. If anybody has felt, he has felt. So give him your yes today. Let's give him a continued yes. Amen. Amen. Listen, we have a giveaway in my view. I don't know if you want to say something um, as we're probably going to be wrapping up here. But yes, 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 yes. Go through. Yes, woman of God. I uh, would like to um, be a blessing. We had uh, one of our young ladies on i don't have them before me but if anyone has children or has nieces and nephews we would love to be a blessing and give away some of the affirmation crayons we would love to give away some of those packs i should have brought it down here i didn't bring it but we would like to give some of those away so if you would like to receive um we're going to give at least about three of them away. So if you would like to receive the affirmation um, crayons, it has like, you are beautiful, you are strong. And our children need these affirmations, right? Because they need to know who they are. They hear so many things, even in the home of who they're not. You know, so many word curses they have to deal with, even at school, all these different things. And they need to continually be affirmed. They need to continue to be reminded of who God says they are. They are brilliant. They are strong. They're fearfully. They're wonderfully made. And so if you have nieces and nephews or if you have children and you would love to um, receive or to be a blessing to give them away, we're going to give three of those away. Um, if so, if that is you, you could just put a one up in the comments and we will... Um, and once you do that, we'll call out your name and then you can just send uh, an email to us. Hey, hey, you were one of the giveaway recipients. And we would also like to give away one of Naaman's books. I am not a monster. So if you would like to uh, receive the I am not a monster, we're doing one of these for a giveaway. Then please put um, you would like to receive and just put I am not a monster or put name is book and we will get that to you. And you must listen. Uh, please listen to these instructions. You must email the email address that's scrolling across the screen. And you have 48 hours to email us. After that, it can go to somebody else, okay? We always do this with our giveaways. We give you 48 hours because we want to get it out and get it in the mail to you. We don't want to delay. If you would like to receive a box of the crayons, put crayons. We're going to do three of those. We're doing one of the giveaways for I Am Not a Monster. If you want to receive that book, put that. Uh, we're also giving away uh, Birthing the Dreamer in You. So if you would like to receive a copy of Birthing the Dreamer in You, please put that, Birthing the Dreamer in You. Um, also, uh, we're going to be giving away Intercession 101. And this book is by uh, Jasmine B. And a beautiful woman of God. So we're going to be giving away Intercession 101. And so this is a mom's aid in obedience. So if you are a mom or you know a mom that this will be beneficial for, then please uh, put, you could put 101 in the comments because I know it's long titles. You could put that and we will definitely get that to you. Uh, send an email to the email address. Scroll and, pop, uh, and then um, our other book, which is, this is a second collaboration that I was a part of. And this is Fierce Women Roaring into Purpose from Pain to Purpose. We're going to give a copy of this away. So you can just put Pain to Purpose because I know these are long titles and we would love to be a blessing. You have 48 hours. OK, so don't be like, hey, she said that I get this book, but you didn't email us. You didn't tell us what it was. You didn't give, and make sure you give us your full mailing address. We're going to put it in the mail um, as soon as you get your information, we're going to get it in the mail. Amen. 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 OK, so for the crayons, we have um, Yannette Cooper. We have um, who is the Facebook user? I'm Apostle here. Vanessa Bowler. Yeah, I see Apostle Vanessa, but um, the Facebook user, um, can you please put your name with it? Because um, I see you. We have you. We want to make sure we got you. Yanita Willer, Paint Purpose. Okay. Thank hey, hey, Juanita. Okay. Thanks, Ma, for your help. I don't know if you need me to do that or not. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so Juanita, good. So go ahead, Juanita, send us your full mailing address um, to tdotd19 at gmail.com, the email address that's scrolling across. Another good book. 
Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Yolanda. Amen. And thank you for your support. Vanessa, uh, Apostle Vanessa, we have you down for a box of crayons. Please uh, email us your full, wherever you would like for us to mail your crayons to, um, to the TDOTD19 email address. And I'm trying to, I might have to go in the group to identify the Facebook user. If you can send us an email, whoever the Facebook user is for the crayons, we will greatly appreciate it. Everyone that is a recipient, please send us an email address. Uh, please put your full mailing address and what it is that you want. And so, Yannette, please send us your email, full email, uh, mailing, excuse me, I'm saying email, mailing address to the email address scrolling across, and we will send you those box of crayons. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. So, um, if anyone would like the intercession one on one, a mom's aid and obedience, just let us know and we will get that to you. Amen. Amen. As well as the others. All righty. Okay. Ma, is there anything else that you want to share or say? Yes. Uh, we have a, a prayer line that we run every morning at 6 a.m. Uh, if it's not me, it's one of the intercessors praying. Uh, there's where at Ministries Pocono. As you know, I live in uh, Pennsylvania now. So um, we do a prayer line every morning. And uh, the reason why I'm saying it is because uh, intercession is, is very important and it's vital. And the Lord is going to heal someone who has been having uh, strenuous head pain. Uh, I don't really like to say which side it is on, uh, but it's like on the right of the crown of your head, uh, kind of off to the right a little bit in the back. But that chronic pain, um, the Lord is going to heal you. Amen. The Lord is going to heal you. Glory to God. We just send healing now to the person who has this, these chronic head pains that even goes up to their, um, Lord Jesus, I, I know what these are, uh, but the Lord is going to bring healing to your temple. So it's like all of this on the right side, there's been excruciating pain there uh, for a season. I don't know what it is due to, uh, but Lord, we lift up this individual. If it is a cyst, uh, whatever it may be that is hiding there, a tumor. We command it to burst, uh, to dissipate. In Jesus' name, Jehovah Rapha, we call upon you for healing to this person. And even to one who is having ear pain, ear troubles on the left side, we thank you, Lord God, Jehovah Rapha, that you will bring healing to the ear. In Jesus' name, that it would not throb or thwart like it has been doing, like it's uh, um, it's like it's something in there, uh, just turning around and so we send healing to that ear right now in jesus name we command discomfort to come out kotabashaya in your name oh god we command healing to go in and let us just say that we cannot bless what god we cannot curse what god has blessed we cannot curse what god has blessed there there are i'm just going to obey the, the lord if I if it's all right with you, Rashida, I, you know, we all over the place. They don't come in the deliverance technician for nothing. But there are people who really believe that what they're doing is is correct. And but we, we do not have the right to curse or try to curse people for what God has blessed. We cannot curse. So we have to use wisdom, and I shared this this morning on the prayer line, with the way that we pray for people. We do not have the right to damn somebody to hell or condemn them to hell or say they deserve that. When God has given us Jesus, our advocate, if we go to him and ask for forgiveness, he forgives us that day. And it's not that anyone has to live up to our scrutiny of deliverance, of forgiveness, or when we think that person has done enough, or when we feel like they have done enough. It's not how dare we put ourselves in God's shoes and you're treading. You're treading in a place where you don't belong. And you have, to, I'm bringing a warning to stop doing that. Because intercessors are praying. No one has the right to be damned to hell, Not definitely not by a human who is no better than the other person. All of us have seen and come short of the glory of God. You do not want to be found as a Christian witch because the word of God says, suffer a witch not to live. Suffer a witch not to live. You do not have a right to say this person needs to, to go through what they're do going through because of this. Joe went through a lot of things that he did no wrong. Joe went through and did no wrong. 
Joseph went through because he was sold. But look how the Lord elevated him. You, you. Sometimes we gloat at the wrong time in processes that the Lord has allowed for the elevation. He says he's doing it in the presence of our enemies. I can't. Get, I got a my, my, my from your Nita Willow. You don't know what you think you're trying to put your mouth on on somebody. God is no respecter of person. What he do for one, he'll do for another. And so for every witch on this line that thinks that you're cursing somebody, please stop before God gets you. Because saints are praying. It's not like you haven't been warned. And then do a self-evaluation of your conversion. Have you been changed since you've been saved? Since you've been saved? Saved from what? We got to stop doing this. Stop damning our own houses. Stop clogging up the flow in our own ministries by our words. Life and death is in the power of our own tongue. And then people who really study know they can say return to sender. Stop, stop damning people to death. Like you are the final in their life and you're not the final in their life. It's a warning because God is about to come. He's about to bring some discipline. Because true intercessors are praying. True intercessors are praying. The Lord's will will be done in these people's lives who have a curse is causeless without a cause. Make sure you're right. Ask the Lord to forgive you. And once the Lord has forgiven you, you don't have to convince anybody that God has forgiven you. He's forgiven you. You do not have to convince people. People try to condemn me to hell because of my past. You got a problem with my past? Take it to the Father. Long as I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, that means I'm saved. You do not have the right to condemn me to hell. I don't care who you think you are. Check your own house. Make sure your house is in order. Stop trying to check everybody else's houses because you tread in some place you have no business. That is so out of order. It's out of sync of what God is wanting to do. And it's not making God look good. He's not getting the glory for that. Let us stop women of God, men too, with this gossip that we do. I never knew men gossip the way they do, but men gossip and women gossip. And then when you put your step of approval on it or your step of denial on it, you in the wrong place. Gossip is sin. Let's talk about that. Quote unquote, gossip is sin too. I didn't know I was going to go here. But we got these self-righteous with these selfish expectations and selfish deliberations, judge and jury, and they putting the gavel down, declaring somebody's going to die, declaring somebody deserve. What about you? What do you deserve? What do you deserve? What do you deserve? What do you deserve? So we got to get to a place. The Bible says to pray for your enemies. This is the thing that gets me, Prophetess Rashida, is the Lord prepares our table in the presence of our enemies. People have things so misconstrued that they would just study the Bible. If they would just study it, then you would see, okay, it's a lot of enemies around me. God is elevating me. I can't get no help in here. I said, God is elevating me. How do I know God is elevating me? Because I'm in the midst of my enemies. Shot. Coach of I don't care if they're in your own house. He's elevating you. Your enemies are all around. Don't eat the food. Your enemies is all around. You got to have peace right there. Joseph got the peace right there in prison. Job got the pre peace right there in the midst of the storm, in the midst of losing everything that he had. Even his prestige, he lost it. And because he passed that test, God gave it back. Who is this for? Who is this for? Right in the midst of it. And Job's wife said, Forget about your God and die because the devil wants you to feel like God ain't there with you. No, God is letting you know he's there with you. Did you did you not study Job? Did you not study Joseph? Did you not study Jesus? Rashida said even Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. It was like, Lord, woo -hoo! nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He don't respect a person. We all going to go through something. We all fit now. Come on here. We all going to go through something. Make sure you on the right of the go through. Don't be on the wrong side of that. Don't be on the wrong side of it. Be on the right side of it. Lord, you see what they doing? Nehemiah said, Lord, you see what Sam Violet and Tobiah and them doing over there? Give them what they trying to give me. It don't mean you a witch. Do you say that? Definitely you had a power and authority 
to cast devils out. We've been given the power over all power of the enemy. You do not have to be anybody's victim and lay down and let the devil tread on you. You're supposed to tread on him. These suffering Christians and saints for no reason. You got to open your mouth and declare, I am above only and not beneath. I'm the head, huh? And not the tail. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. Huh? You hating on me because I'm blessed. You coming up against me because I'm blessed. You don't have nothing nice to say about me because I'm blessed. Go ask Joseph. His brothers couldn't speak nice about it. They was jealous of it because he was blessed. You got to get this thing and turn this thing around and stop getting the woe is me, the devil, the devil. Give God the glory. God, you get the glory for it. Your word says when men revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you, it's because you're blessed. You suffering because you're blessed. You suffering because the glory is about to sit up on you. you you're not going to get nowhere if you can't suffer. And then you start glowing and people be wanting to touch you and be like, where did you get that glory from? Go and suffer a little while and then see how you look. Stop thinking it's all dressed up, makeup, leather shoes and, and alligator skins and furs. You're going to suffer something. You are a real saint. You got to go through something. I, I can't get no help in here. I can't get no help in here now. The deliverance tech is coming out of me. Come on here. You're going to go through something. This ain't no walk through the tulips, da Daisy dancing with me. You go, you're going to go through. You're going to be tried. You're going to be tried. The apostle comes to trouble the trouble. The trouble don't trouble the apostle. The apostle troubles the trouble. I see you, devil. I see what you're doing. What you trying to do. That means God about to elevate me. Put everything in its proper place. Stay calm. Stay calm. Yes, yeah, a yellow light. Stay calm while the yellow light is blinking. Ooh, oh, I'm going to tear this room up. Stay calm. It's a caution while the yellow light is blinking. God's about to elevate you. You look back this time, next week, this time tomorrow, whenever your tomorrow comes into play, you're going to look back over this. You're going to say, they thought they was going to do this. They thought. They thought they was going to take me out. They thought they had, you know, them ditch diggers. The Bible say, I better stop. The ditch diggers, you dig in one ditch, you better dig two. Because the second one's going to be for you. Keep on digging ditches for folk. Keep on acting like you the final, you Jesus and you God and all that. Keep on trying to work witchcraft. We thwart the plan right now. We put a cramp in your hands right now. You're not making any more potions. Katabai, you another, you another, uh, send another, uh, 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 vocal course curse through anybody, to anybody. We silence your voice right now. The word of God says, suffer a wish not to live. I can't get no help in here. I'm in the word. I'm in the text. I'm in the text. I'm in the text. I'm in the text. It says, suffer a wish not to live. You don't run from the witch. The witch need to run from you. Rashida, I'll be going over, back and forth overseas, which I haven't been in a while. And as soon as I get out the airport, as soon as I get the invite, the devil starts stirring up stuff, trying to do what keep me from going to my destination. Everything starts rumbling around. Churches start acting crazy. God's going to elevate me. So as soon as I get over and start doing what I'm supposed to do, here come Dagon. I'm talking, I ain't talking about no little imps. Imps is nothing. I'm talking about big demons, big strong men. The Lord is giving you power and authority over all power of the enemy. You are to tread on him. We tread on serpents. Glory to God. We cast down every vain imagination. We silence the voice of the Rob Shaka. He's given us the power and authority in his name. Even demons tremble at that name. If you can't say nothing, muster out the name Jesus in the name of Jesus. Get off me in Jesus name. Leave me alone in Jesus' name. I'm healed in Jesus' name. We got one who comes on the prayer line, and I'm, I'm going to throw it back to Rashida. We got one who comes on the prayer line, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Yolanda. I, I got to tell this. She, she's on here. She probably don't mind. They, they, they gave her a death sentence. They gave her a death sentence because she had had COVID. She called me, and I generally don't give it all up like this, but somebody's on here that needs to hear this testimony. The devil can't do nothing to you without God's permission. And then God want to know what you going to do with it. Come on here. And she called me and she said, Pastor Desmond, I have not, I'm not in any sin. 
This is what the doctors told me. They told me that my heart and my kidneys is shutting down. Will you please pray? I've sown seed. I've done this. I've done that. Please. She said, can you instruct me on what I need to do? So we all prayed and fast on the prayer line. I gave her the instructions, which I don't remember all of them verbatim, but she followed up. She submitted. I can't get no help here. She submitted and did whatever I told her to do. And I'm, I'm not no cream puff because I'm looking through all corners. I'm looking under the bed and there's, there is an authority that rises in me for the sake of your life. You got to deal with that. I'm looking everywhere. She said, apostle, whatever you need me to do. Amen. I never asked her for no money. Amen. And so we pray for her to this day. She's healed. The doctors cannot understand what happened, but she told them, you can say I'm going to die whenever you want to, but God ain't so told me that. And so God used this woman to get these doctors saved. You don't know what God is trying to use you for. You got to start opening up your mouth, declaring the word of the Lord. Whose report are you going to believe? Not the fact that I came back from the dead. I was gone for 20 minutes, floating out of my body and commanded the spirit of death to release me. Stop being a victim. You're not a low life. You a child of the king. You're above only and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. You're advancing. Glory to God. Come on here with power and authority. You don't have to be held down by anyone, by any voice, by any threats, by any illness, by any sickness. It has to behave. The name of Jesus, cancer has to behave no matter what it is. The Lord told us we was on a, on a, on a journey somewhere. And I'm going to give back to Rashida. We was on a journey somewhere. And the Lord said, you're going to heal this lady of cancer. I said, well, let me go do it now. He said, no, do it in front of the church. I said, just let me do it. I don't need to be seen. Just let me go do it now. He said, no. And when I was getting ready to, to heal her, this woman came up against me and took the mic from me in front of everybody. We was in Columbus, Indiana. And the Lord said, just keep your cool. Because your name is on a program. Ain't nothing nobody can do to you. Where is your name on the roll? So the mic had to come back to me. You don't have to approve of the way I do deliverance and all of that. My name is on a program. That mic is going to come back to me. Whatever it said, that me and my people was there. Her and her people was there. She going to snatch the mic from me because she didn't like the way I did deliverance. So that mic had to come back to me. When the mic came back to me, I said, this is one thing we got to get to understand. You're an evangelist. You do ministry your way. I'm an apostle. I do ministry my way. I have to pray for this woman and get her healed. That I'm going to obey God. And that woman got healed of cancer. Okay. When I went back to that ministry, I think a year or so later, that woman of God got up in front of everybody who was there on another event. And she commended me in front of all of these people. Now, I could have been fickle and ran out with my head between my legs. I could have let her hurt my heart. I could have took my people and left. We was in another city. But I stood. And so when this woman told me this, I sat there and I teared up and I gave God praise that he gave me a stiffness in my back. Not, I'm not talking about a stiff neck where I can't learn nothing from nobody. But when the adversary is trying to get you out of position so others will miss their blessing, the Lord put a firmness in me because he formed, he firmed me on a firm foundation. He formed me there. That I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going by what you say about me. I don't care how you think about me. I was invited here. I didn't come in here and push my way through this door. I was called. I was invited here. And so I had to let my people know people not are accustomed to the way I do deliverance, but I'm on assignment. This woman is going to get healed. And if anyone else needs deliverance, come on down here. We did what the Lord told us to do. And they were delivered. My name was written there. Nothing that woman could have done about it. And she did apologize to me later. You know, she didn't apologize to my people, but we are all right. And the miracle happened. So when I went back later on, a year or so later, uh, that lady, the, the, the first lady said, when you came for our anniversary, you had to endure some things. And we thank you that you did because you didn't know that the lady was healed. And if you hadn't decided to go through that, she would have missed her blessing and the Lord had extended her life. And so you never know why God has you where you are and for who. I got a blessing from the woman of God. I got to come on here from Yanita Willer. You don't know. It's just not about you and your little self. It's about others. And I'm not trying to demean you when I say your little self. We small to God. We serve a big, big God. And so let God be big in you. A lot of you have these gifts of healing and deliverance, and you got to start using them. It's back in your hands, daughter. I, I don't want to go too, too much. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, don't throw it back, Jesus. I'm like, <laughs> I'm 
I'm like, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> Woo, my, my God. Listen, today, my, you could have kept going however the Lord wanted you to go, but listen, <laughs> it just reminded me, and I thank you, and the others, thank you for just sharing that because it reminded me of a vision the Lord has shown me, and I was like, oh, okay. And it was in reference to that. And it was just like, don't you ever back down to the, it don't. And it was just like, and I'm not going to go into the actual, the vision of what it was all about, but it was just saying, what he was showing me was just that boldness in Christ, who we are, just that you rise up in the boldness, you know, that I have given unto you. And you tell them, you don't back down from the devil. No, how dare you even come and think that you're gonna, and that's what it was, it was like, know your authority, walk in your authority and know who you are. And that's what you walk in and God had told you to go. So you show up in the name of the Lord. And so I was, I'm just listening to you. I'm like, my God today. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah, 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 she on fire. Yeah, yeah, she on fire. Man, you guys know sometimes Rashida has been with me where we are, we have been invited and the greeters at the door treat us like we the scum of the earth. And I'm like, what? Oh, we invited here. And so I let the, the people know when you have a guest, that guest, you know, they're the guest. You don't treat them like they're the scum of the earth at the back door, you know, and trying to take Rashida one way or my other armor bears the other way. They stay with the speaker. You don't separate them from their people. And just let me come down. Certain things you do not do. You just do not do those things. Amen. And you want a miracle. And so in that, I'm saying this. If, let's get to this. I want to bring a scripture because I just don't want it to be my opinion. Apostle Paul, they were sent. Amen. Acts 16, 16. They were sent there. You, you all can go back up through that and read it. You will see they were sent there. They were sent into chaos. So when the, the, the apostles are sent a lot of times into chaos to bring calm to chaos. That's why I say the apostle comes to trouble the trouble. Meaning they were going to prayer, minding their own business. And then here comes the woman, the diviner, amen, trying to work her work. So they had to get her delivered. They didn't get her delivered the first day. Apostle Peter, forgive me, Acts 16, 16. Y'all can write it down. Go check it out. It was Peter. It was two of them going to prayer. I believe it was Peter. And so the Lord didn't, the Holy Spirit didn't reveal to him who it was or what spirit it was the first day. But before they left that region, that woman was delivered. And so was that region because she was a witch. She was a diviner working roots and stuff, getting money unjustly. And then she kept saying, these be the men of God. Yeah, what she said was true. They are the men of God. But it was her character. It was what she was already doing in that land as to why they had to deliver her. And so sometimes you are going in to deliver the bishop or the apostle. It doesn't have to be done in front of the church, but he's sending you in there for a reason. And you have to do it. But that woman that was attacking me, she wasn't in charge of nothing. She was on the program just like I was. And I let her know. You out of you out of sorts with yourself. Get yourself together now, because that's not what you do. I'm invited just like you, and we were friends. She said, "Just look at your face. You don't even look like you had the love of God on you." And I said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Now I'm known for love. Don't try to put me in a box." And we have to not do that. I think that's why um, a lot of people are drawn to us. I'm, I'm shifting to emerging in Christ. It's because of how we love them. And we allow them to be who God has called them to be. You cannot change a person from who God called them to be. You, you don't have the right to do that. When Nehemiah went to his, his person and he, he saw his visage was different and he was cumbersome in trouble, he asked him what was the problem. He gave him what he needed. He gave him letters. He gave him protection. But he never told him specifically how to build. Can't get no help in here. We cannot, we have to stop stifling people in their bill. Help them along the way. Get them the materials. Lead them, press them. But do not just make them a cookie cutter of who you are. I don't tell Rashida nothing what to do unless she comes to me asking me a question. And the churches I cover, I don't control them. If they have a question, that's different. Monthly meetings is different. But you just don't go and make them a double to you. That ain't what they you do. You know, we don't stop controlling people. Spirit of Jezebel got to get out of here. I'm, I'm trying to calm down. I'm trying. Come on, Rashida. Help me out. Jesus. <laughs> Woo wee, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Prophetess Monica, she said that's right. <laughs> that's 
Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo, wait, Jesus. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Woo. I am going to tell you, I'm so proud of you as my daughter. Um, a lot of people, I don't know if you guys know the story that I, I, I couldn't birth a daughter. I have a biological son, uh, Lamont Dobbins. He's 37. And I suffered a bad marriage and I'm older now. I'm, I'm 50. I'll be 55 this year. And years ago, I don't know how long I've known Rashida. I think maybe 10 or 12 years. But years ago, I had I had told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm serving you. And this husband is not the husband that um, he is supposed to be. He's everyone else's husband. And he's not he's not my husband. And um, I said, Lord, I don't have a daughter. You told me you was going to give me a daughter. And he sent Rashida to me. Um, and so she's more than a spiritual daughter. Her and Naaman are family. Um, I'm very, very proud of you, Rashida, to see you. Uh, amen. Hey, you know, I, I'll do it again another day. Is it Prophetess, uh, Prophetess Floyd? Prophetess Monica Floyd? Pr praise the Lord. Um, but I just wanted to take time to love on Rashida. And I just want to tell you that waiting looks good on you. How you waited. And how you supported your husband name and my son and how you gave him kids and everything that you've done and how you stay in your position as a wife and how you keep your house clean and you cook and all of that and how you learn to cook and how you learn you know how you do things with your whole heart and i love you i'm so grateful that god gave you to me and because he showed me how to love you then I was able to learn how to love the other daughters that he sent. And so I'm just so honored and I'm humbled uh, that you wanted to do this recap today. I don't, I'm on fire over here, but I wouldn't have traded our time for nothing to see you go from cussing and shaking your neck at me. Uh, you guys don't know Rashida would talk to me with her neck. Nah, 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 nah. And she had to be heard. Da, 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 da. Itty bitty, itty bitty, just da, da, da. I said, Rashida, all up on me. I said, Rashida, 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 stop. And to see God, what he's done for her from then to now, I'm, I'm honored. And I love you so much. I love you. And I cherish you. Amen. You've really grown. And I expect greatness out of you. I expect you to keep growing. Amen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you, Apostle. Ma was talking about it earlier. Don't give up on people. Don't give up on people. Whoever God has called you to, keep praying for them. Keep interceding. I thank God, and that's one of the things when people ask me about her, I thank God that she showed me the love of God. That's one of the, it's so many things that I got from her, but that was the one thing that really, that always stands out to me the most. She showed me relationship. And, um, I'm just truly grateful. I'm thankful to God. And like I tell people, <laughs> they say no good thing come out, come out of Nazarene. <laughs> you just you just don't you don't know. So don't give up on people. You keep praying for them. You you intercede, you know, as God leads you. However, you know, all things are different, but I just just don't give up on people. I think uh, some of the one of the funny things with us is how God would always tell me on Rashida. I'd be like, God, why are you telling me on Rashida? And I think Rashida needed to see it, you know. Um, and it would just like she would be like, "I'm on my way, Ma. Is everything okay?" It's like she was checking, like, "Is everything okay, Ma?" Before I get there, like, you need to talk to me about anything before I get there. I'd be like, "Everything's okay." And then, like, soon as she knock on the door, the Lord will be like, oh, tell Rashida, blah, blah, blah. And I say, oh, Rashida, the Lord said, blah, 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 blah. And she'd be like, I thought everything was okay. I said, I just heard the word. 
and she would just look at me. She would pound, kick her feet. It was so cute. Um, my 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 biological family knows Rashida. They're getting to know some of the other daughters, but they just know her. Uh, like when I was at the hospital, she just came right in because they know her. She's in my life. She is in my life. She's just not around. She is actively in my life as my daughter. They know her. My cousins, my third cousins, everyone in my family, they know her. My son knows her. My grandson knows her. So she is my daughter. Amen. And so we give God praise how he builds and how he heals us. Amen. And her husband helped me to be healed as well. And I love him dearly. Uh, how he would pick me up from the airports. I'm coming back just been uh, in a war with Dagon and some other big old demons. And he's right there, you know, just waiting on me, you know. And, you know, like I'm saying, because of Rashida, I've learned how to, to love Vanessa. I've learned how to, to love uh, uh, Valerie Bratz. I've learned how to love, amen, Crystal and the other daughters that he's brought along and the other sons. But it had to start with somebody. And so Rashida took a lot of the blunt. She took a lot of hardships because I had to learn it because I was a cutthroat prophet. Like I would cut your tail. I would spank your behind. Look, I'm not playing. God saw you. You know, I'm shaking. Look, cut it out. You know, for the sake of your life, I can't get no help. And she like, Ma, is everything okay? Boy, I come over there on your side of town to beat you up. So uh all of that you know uh we had to grow together and just love one another together amen and it was an honor to be able to go see the babies right at the hospital and bless them right there at the hospital put the all of their head just so many moments you know to know that she got the the first uh crop it, it's not the crock pot it's the other pot that that cooks quicker than that what's the name of that Rashida that you you talking about an Instapot? The Instapot. To know <laughs> that she had the Instapot. Amen. You know, so it's just, you have to, and, and the thing is with all of them, uh, Yannette, all of them, I try to have good moments with them so we can have good memories. It's key that you make good memories of laughter. It just can't all the time be instruction uh, and discipline. You got to have a good balance. So they'd be like, I mean, Apostle Domus don't want to give you a break for nothing. She always in your behind, always correcting. No, I want to make it where it's balanced and I work for the balance. Amen. And so I give God praise that he will, you know, glory to God, balance us out to where we can just love in spite of the test, in spite of the sin that was just committed. You don't have to condemn them to hell. And, and my thing is, if the daughter or son already came and told you what they just did, just love on them. Just baby, it's OK. Let's make it through to the next. Let's pass the next test. You don't have, we don't have the right to condemn people. And the prodigal son is the, 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 the main thing that, that helped me with that. And then me, when I fell short, how my spiritual father loved me, he told me, get back in the fight. It's not like you out here practicing sin. You just, you got caught up with the young man and, and, and get on back, get on back to work. Don't do it again, but get back to work. It's, 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 I mean, if you can go and admit and confess to your spiritual leader or your spiritual mom, your spiritual dad, you just committed a sin. That's enough right there. When, 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 uh, it was, um, uh, I keep saying I'm gonna stop, but I'm still going. Uh, uh, Moses' brother and sister, Miriam. Miriam didn't want to admit what she did, so she had to get put outside the camp. But Aaron, he was convicted in his heart, he was already forgiven because he was convicted. If you already convicted, if, if you're already convicted, amen, you don't, you know, it's, it, you don't have to walk in condemnation because if your heart is condemned, you won't ask God for anything. And so when my sons and daughters come to me, I just love them. I love the hurt out of them. I love the hell out of them. And the Lord is going to give them another opportunity. So why can't I? If they are true son and daughter, that's key. Send your hands back. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, that is so good. And quickly, we want to, we would just want to honor you all and thank you so much for just being a support um, to Apostle and the many ministries that's just going across the screen that um, God has 
blessed her to steward and be the visionary of. And um, thank you for just supporting her. Thank you for supporting the Day of the Daughters. Thank you for just everything that you've been a part of in any way, commenting, giving, sharing, whatever you just thank you so, so much for being a part. Thank you for being with us throughout 2021. Thank you so much because it's because of you and with you that the ministries are what they are. So we thank you so much for that. We always just want to acknowledge blessings, everyone that came on. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're doing a recap with Apostle Desmond Dobbins and myself, Rashida Haig. And it, this has been a truly beautiful time. And I just want to encourage you to know that even when you are in the ministry, God, he gives us what we need. God knew what I needed and he put what I needed inside of this beautiful vessel. And I'm grateful. I am grateful for that. And those, these are just, um, those are just some words to express, but I'm truly grateful. God knew. And she talks about how God blessed her with a daughter. He blessed me with a mother. I have my biological mother, but he knew I needed her spiritually. He knew what I needed and he gave me much, much more in her. And I'm thankful to him. I'm forever grateful to God for that because he knows what's best. And so I thank God for even where she was at the door. She was just saying she was a strict prophet. I needed that. He knows what you need. I needed that. And she, like he said, he gave her and he taught her, you know, through the process and all of that, you know, how to even mail out. So though uh, my brothers and sisters now, they getting another apostle. And probably, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get what I got. Because <laughs> let me tell you, because at times I was like, Jesus, what is going on here? Like, my, you've been real nice to them. What is <laughs> Be like, well, yeah, because he knows what we can handle. Listen, he knows. And I'm so thankful for that. And even with that, I want to say this. You don't have to be jealous. You don't have to be anxious. You don't have to compete or anything. And Ma, she hit a little bit about this. Others, my brothers and sisters in Christ, my brothers, I'm saying my brothers and sisters, my siblings here under Ma, that's her daughters and her sons, they have, God has um, had mom to, you know, pass other ministries onto them even before the day of the dark. But I never got jealous. I never got none of those things because God knows what he's doing. I always celebrated with them. I always honored them. However, I could support them. I supported them. And when you truly have the heart of God and when God, listen, you don't have to be jealous. It's enough room at the table. Hello, somebody. Everybody's going to eat and eat good. Listen, come on. It's not about that. Let's get rid of that crap in the borough mentality. Listen, we're not going to restart this, but I just want to encourage you. Just continue to um, encourage one another, continue to lift up one another, continue to support one another, be there. You don't have to be jealous. You don't have to compete because we all have assignments. We all have assignments. And so I bless God. I thank you all for the love in the comments. Apostle, thanks you for the love in the comments. We appreciate you for being here with us. We've been here almost two hours. <laughs> and we want to, we just want to honor you all. That's why we just want to love on you all. And I want to, before Apostle and I want to honor this beautiful woman of God before we get off of here. We mentioned her name a few times, but we really want to pull it out. Crystal Young, we honor you on today. We honor you. And I know, don't start crying because I can feel myself starting to cry. We honor you on today. Apostle Now, we've been talking about you. She was talking about you last night. We honor you. I'm telling you, God sees you. And that's for everybody. God sees each and every one of us. We don't have to have no hidden agendas, no hidden motives. Just be, as Apostle said, be, be the best you, be who you are. But we want to honor Crystal. She always, she shares the video. She reminds us, she tags us, just everything. And we just want to honor her. We want to honor her for her growth in God, her relationship. We see you. God sees you, Crystal. He sees you. He is loving on you. 
today. He is loving on you. He's pulling you out there. He's highlighting you on today, Crystal. My, you come on, say something. <laughs> yes, I give God praise uh, for Crystal. Uh, one day, uh, I have a, a God baby in New Jersey. I'm, we're going to get through this. And uh, my God baby calls me Dobby Dobby. So I was in Indianapolis somewhere, and I heard somebody say, how are you, Dobby Dobby? I looked over. It was Crystal. I was like, okay. So she's watching me. <laughs> I ain't know what to think. I'm like, but I had seen her before um, at one of the Day of the Daughters events. And so I was like, okay, so I don't have to wig out because I, I know that I, I know of her. And so uh, since then, the Lord has sent her to There's Where at Ministries Pocono. So she is truly a precious, precious lamb. And I love her and how she keeps in touch with Rashida. I love how they have their sister day. They go out and have sister day. Um, and I, I like, you know, the, the one I'm family oriented. I think you have to keep in touch with people to stay safe, save people, not is the difference with gossipers and things like that. I'm not talking about that. You need to have accountability, save people. Now, Rashida doesn't call and tell me what, what they're talking about because we don't do that here. You know, it's not like that. If you know anything about Rashida, she's going to say, call and tell Ma yourself. You need to call and have a talk. Well, did you call Apostle? This is how she leads them through. Amen. And so we do have an open door policy that you can call and talk to me for yourself. And I can really appreciate you for that. And I will love on you for that and try to lead you through. Amen. And so, but we love Crystal. Um, I haven't met her children yet, but I know that I'm going to meet them. And Crystal was like, is everything okay, Apostle, before I come over there? Apostle, how you doing? I'm calling. <laughs> you know, like she's she trusts me, but she's checking me like, Apostle, how you doing? Texting me, how you doing? And so, you know, I love her because I think that when she shares those videos with us, she's letting us know, I remember meeting you guys. I remember uh, Y'all coming on here. I remember this lesson. I remember this teaching. I remember that. So I get a little tickled with her. Amen. But we're so honored to have her even to be a part of There's White Ministries Poconos um, in our Zoom church, in our virtual church uh, where she's present. She's a giver. Amen. And so I love you. I love you so much. If, if I can do anything, you know, I'm here. You got my information. Just don't hesitate to let me know. We love you. and We celebrate you today, woman of God. God bless you and keep you. You are victorious. You are victorious. And the greater one is in you. We love you so much. Love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I thought Apostle's about to go in. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, <laughs> well, Apostle, it, um, if you don't if you have any closing or final remarks before we get off, we appreciate you. We want we honor your time. So we will have you on here all. <laughs> Even though we can be here, we could just keep on, keep on. But we love and appreciate you. And we just thank you so much for this. Um, and just thank you for being you. Thank you for being you. Amen. Thank well, tonight I'll be teaching on discerning of spirits and distinguishing spirits at Bible study at 7 p.m. If you would like to come back out, I'll be live and you can join us there. I pray that you all will have a, a great time at the holiday with Christmas, celebrating Jesus and your families. Amen. I love you and enjoy your time and try to spend as much time with your family as you can. Be safe out there with COVID, Omicron, whatever they want to call it, these, these different variants. Amen. And just try to keep yourself safe. But don't forget to love somebody. Love somebody and let them love you. Amen. I love you, daughter. God bless. Amen. I love you too, Ma. Thank you so much, Apostle. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. It has truly been a blessing as we have recapped. Um, let's just look for a lot of things coming forth from Apostle. Please follow her. Um, follow her ministries. Her ministries are up. Also, I'm going to put up her book and her website. Again, go to her website. That way you can keep in contact. You can keep up with the things that are going on. Her website will let you know. It also, you can purchase her book from there as well. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, the giveaway recipients um, that excuse me, that received a book from Apostle, please make sure you reach out to Apostle, the five uh, recipients. Please make sure you reach out to her, inbox her, and she will um, let you know the rest of that information, how to get the book. All right. Um, also, for those um, who 
um, receive books from uh, the day of the daughters, um, please make sure you send your um, full mailing address and what it is that you want to this email address that's scrolling across the screen. That's tdotd19 at gmail.com. You have until Friday to send us that email. We greatly appreciate it because we wanted to hurry up and get it out the mail. Thank you, Apostle Vanessa, for already sending me your information. We love and appreciate it. I said, that's how you do it, Jesus. That's how you do it. So thank you so much for that. Um, those that won the crayons, please send your uh, email your information. For those who uh, won the books, please email your information. All right. Blessings and love to you all. It has been really great on today. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. All right. Blessings and love, everyone. And you all don't join Apostle tonight. What time did you say, Ma? At 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. We'll be on the radio, uh, blog talk, uh, DesmondDoppersRadio.com, which is on Blog Talk, and we will be here on Facebook, also on Zoom. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So make sure you join her, um, and you can go to her pages and all of that good stuff so you can find out uh, how to join. Um, so join her. And also, can you please, she did not ask me for this, but I'm going to go ahead. Don't mind. Please don't look like that. <laughs> Can you please let the people know if the, the Lord is leading them to sow into you? Could you please let them know how they can sow into you? Yes. The dollar sign, T-I-A-O-M, Poconos, and uh, just put in their seed. I'll type it in on Facebook if you can do it there. T, it's a dollar sign, T-I-A-O-M, Poconos. Okay. And when you want to put in there a uh, C. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. So I'm going to try to pray I got this right. Okay. Is that right? Uh, don't. I don't. T I A O M P O C O N O S. Yes. That okay. is it. So if the Lord, yeah. So if the Lord is leading you, please so um unto Apostle uh, Desmond Dobbins, and then she said also in the notes type seed S E E D. All right. So thank you all so so much, and this will be up uh, later, so you can always go back. Um, and she also put it in the comments as well. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. There it is. Bam. There it is. All right. <laughs> All right. So we love y'all. Y'all continue to have a fabulous, a wonderful day on today. Jesus is Lord and we love and appreciate you all. And thank you once again. Blessings.